everybody, and welcome back to CCDC Mid-Atlantic States 2012. Once again, I'm John Strand, and this is Paul Isidorian with Paul.com Security Weekly. Um, a lot has happened since the last uh, dropout. We've had a number of new injects that have occurred, and Larry and Charlie are going to be telling us about those in business index. We have also had a number of points that have been starting to be scored by the red team. One of the more interesting things that we discovered is a couple of the universities are now discovering that their systems are compromised, which is nice because they've been compromised for about three or four hours. I was so going to say, time on it's that, <laughs> it's about three hours. So yeah, in a real incident, nice. believe it or not, in corporate America, that's not bad. That's um, actually really good to understand that your system has been compromised within three hours hours is uh, extremely good because sometimes it takes multiple years to understand that your systems have been compromised and there's been a lot of big breaches where they've disclosed uh, I believe it was Symantec disclosed they had source code that was leaked and linked it back to a breach that had occurred three years ago. Uh, there's been a lot of financial institutions and universities especially. There was a university that um, had disclosed a breach that had been there for like five years or whatever. So three hours, I think they're doing pretty good. I think, yeah, I think they're doing great. That and they've had a number of really stressful injects and a number of stressful business situations occur. One of the teams even had their power knocked out. One of the white cell people walked by and kicked the power cord out and they were complaining. They said, that, that, you know, we, we shouldn't lose any points for that. And they basically said, hey, that happens in the real world. Um, so I think that it's about time for us to go down for an update in the pit, if I'm correct. I think that we have Larry and Charlie that want to kind of give us a heads up on what has been happening down there. Larry, Charlie, can you guys hear me? Hi, guys. Thanks hey guys. for coming down here. Uh, so we're back over in the blue area. And yes, the stress levels are much higher. Some people are starting to notice that things aren't acting right. Hey, we got a box popped. Oh, no. <laughs> exactly. And one thing that we wanted to talk about is with the theme of the cybersecurity for the healthcare industry, we have a series in CCDC called the Business Injects. Essentially, mm -hmm. this is the things that you would be doing during your real job time, other than just responding to an attack. Yep. Welcome to the real world. Exactly, because yep. I'm assuming when you do information security, you don't stand around waiting for an attack all day, correct? Uh, well, sometimes you do. If you're really well funded, you do. Uh, but oftentimes what you find, and in, even not just in the healthcare industry, is that you're performing multiple duties. Not only are you writing policies, you're potentially securing systems, uh, but you're also maybe having to have folks in your team configure systems and, and do all this stuff. Exactly, and so our teams get scored on how well they respond to regular business tasks. So things like fixing a particular server, uh, namely the DNS server is one task we give them sometimes, mm -hmm. and preparing for something called a uh, HIPAA audit. Could you explain for a second what that is? Sure, so, so HIPAA is um, some guidelines and federal regulations uh, adopted by, by the federal government, uh, mandated and, and administered by HHS. Um, that you know talk to you know, some very simple concepts. It's who, why, when, and how, so, mm -hmm. to, so to speak. So basically, it's a it's protection for your medical records. Who accessed it? Why did they access it? When did they access it? And and uniquely, did did Charlie access it? Did Larry access it? Did um, someone access it? Um, it whether inappropriately or appropriately, and, and those types of things. So it's it's putting all of the compensating controls to to really come into those concepts to be able to tell who accessed what records and, and whether they were done securely and, and, and those types of fashions. Okay, and I know um, during the off time from the last section, I actually went around and did some impromptu interviews with the team captains down here and essentially got the same story from all of them as far as the business injects go. And that was, one, they're a lot more than we expected to have, mm. two, they came a lot sooner, yep. and three, we had to learn how to go do them. <laughs> yep, yeah, yeah, and they're exactly the same thing that we find in industry. You get a, a project handed to you, and you say, hey, we're going to stand up a SharePoint site. Uh, a share what now? Uh, so if you've never stood up a SharePoint site, you've got to figure out how to do that um, to support the needs of the business, and, and sometimes you need to figure out how security is going to play into that as well. Which is a major challenge. And additionally, the fact that they're under attack is having some waterfall effects onto their performance there. Absolutely, absolutely. And well, well, that may be a little bit more compressed uh, with being under attack. Um, it, it certainly illustrates the, the need for being able to accomplish these tasks while multitasking, whether it be a security incident or something else. Yeah, because essentially when the front office asks, why haven't you guys done the task? The response, well, my email server was down and I never got your email. Mm. That doesn't go over yeah, well that sometimes. Yeah, it doesn't work so well. When the CEO can't get his email and can't make phone calls, that's bad. That's bad. And you get to talk to him. Uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> and fill out nice reports, which also means, you know what happens? 
you can't get more of your injects done, <laughs> and you also can't secure your systems because you're filling out reports. Speaking of which, we'll get to have some fun with that uh, tomorrow when some of these guys might get to meet the management of this particular hospital. Oh, that'll be fun. That'll okay. be fun. <laughs> with that, we want to go back up to Paul and John. They're going to talk about what it takes to set up your own CCDC team at your school. John, Paul? Thanks, Larry and Charlie. Hi. Welcome back, everybody. Whoa! <laughs> We like just had magic. a ninja pop up here, uh, Dr. Mike. Yes. Dr. Mike, the tell us a little bit about yourself. Thank the you very much for joining us. So, Dr. Mike, what school are you with? Oh, Towson University. Very cool, very cool. So, how many months did your team spend prepping um, for this exercise? This team started prepping in February of last year when we lost the qualifiers round. You lost the qualifiers we round. We lost the qualifier to, to College Park last year, so we started prepping just that day. Now, have you lost any like students over the process? Had any team overturn? Has this been a pretty good team for it's, sticking it's together? A, it's through? been an excellent team. In fact, we, we have more students than we have slots. You have more um, students. We, we, we had a tryout in January. We had 15 students show up for the eight slots. Um, we had an all-day cyber defense competition to figure out who of our students were going to be on the team. Very cool. So now, what was involved in those tryouts? Like, what did a student have to do? Was it like um, uh, the social network where they had to? code a PHP application while drunk, or was that more structured? <laughs> <sighs> That's what you guys are using for the scorebot, right? That's exactly <laughs> right. Exactly. Exactly. I'm just saying, all right. <laughs> uh, no, what, we, what, we, what, we, what we did for the competition, for the, for the tryouts, is I gave each of four teams um, six personally and individually configured machines, mm -hmm. um, and those machines had all sorts of vulnerabilities already installed on them, but they were identical for each of the four teams. So each team could play offense by playing defense. Mm -hmm. So you could go in, and if you discovered, for example, that the SSH keys were already pre-shared among your boxes, you would then know that, hey, I can go attack the other team using that exact uh, same method. It's really cool. And it also yeah. makes it a lot more um, objective yes. rather than being subjective as far as who makes the team yes. and who does not. Yep. So as far as coming here the night before, what, what, did you guys, what did you guys do? What was the team doing the night before competition last night? Were they taking um, it easy? Were they hunkering down, working on their scripts? Were they drinking themselves into oblivion like the red team? I was getting emails from the team all the way up until about 11 o'clock, but I don't know what they were doing. You don't know what they were doing? <coughs> no. They, they, they had, that they that had was plans. the script to send was an email. Was it drunk they had texting? Plans. No, no, no. We, we love you, man. <laughs> <laughs> they, 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 they have been working, you know, three, four, five, six hours a day every day for, for a couple of weeks now getting ready. Wow, very cool. Now, so far, we, as we know, the scorebot's a little bit wonky as far as up on our display right now. How, how do you feel your team's doing this far into the game? Too early to tell. Too early to Too tell. Too early to tell. I, 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 this, this is the seventh time I've done this competition. You really don't know what's going on until tonight at the earliest and early yeah. tomorrow. I mean, I mean, you're going to know if you're in dead last. Yeah, um, but, if, yeah. but, if, but if you're looking to win this, you're not going to know anything about whether you're going to win until much, much later. It's yeah. a marathon, I'm, not it's a sprint. Mar exactly. It I, I just want to make sure that, that, that the team is, is, is you know, within striking distance at the end of the first day. If they're, if they're in striking distance, we'll be in okay shape. So how do you prepare them like, mentally? Because one of the things that you notice in a lot of these competitions and working many incidents is that people wear down. They get stressed yes. out. They panic. And when you panic, you stop breathing. When you stop breathing, you stop Bad getting oxygen happen. and yes. you start stop thinking. So how do you mentally prepare them for that type of stress and rigor? Uh, we do a lot of practice competitions. We did, we did two in January. We did one in December. Uh, most of this team participated in the Maryland Cyber Challenge this past fall. Um, we did a couple over the summer. So, so these sorts of exercises are not new to them. Mm -hmm. um, we actually use a smaller version of this in our class, our capstone class, case studies in computer security. Um, so the students get a chance to do that in a class setting as well as outside class. So it's not quite that stressful when you've done it before. This is bigger, this is harder, the more difficult, but it's not fundamentally new to them. Very cool. Are there any things that watching your team, and it's got to be tough because you can't be down oh, in the pit oh, working yeah. with them. <laughs> Are there any things that you're seeing and you're just kind of thinking, wow, next time we're going to prepare by doing X to do things a little bit different? Not so much yet. I'll talk to them. I'll, we'll, we'll debrief on, on, on Saturday night after the competition's over and see you know, what lessons they learned. Um, I always try and get the, 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 the folks from previous competitions to come back and mentor the team. Um, one of the guys actually from the 2010 team that went to Nationals is actually here. Mm -hmm. um, we get them to come back and, 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 and help the next generation. So do you have any hopes as far as, as these games continue to progress that someday, hopefully, there will be a situation where the winning team will take like a big 50-gallon jug of Gatorade and dump it on the coach, <laughs> like, like <laughs> national football? Um, they're not going to dump it on me, but, but we, can, we, we can aim for the dean. <laughs> you can aim for the dean. <laughs> Next time, wear swim trunks, right? Exactly. Absolutely. Um, so what recommendations would you give to other professors, other people at universities trying to gear up for these types of competitions? The students really want to learn this stuff. If you give them a chance um, and provide the opportunity, they will come out in droves. Um, we did a 
uh, a lecture series that we had the last couple of years where the students would give lectures on various topics. Um, so we had one night we had a, a student talk about using Metasploit and MSO8067. I had to bring in extra chairs from the hall because, because the classroom was filled to the gills. I had, I had 55 students yeah. in class that night. Yeah. Um, so, so the students really want to learn about this. They just don't have the opportunity in a lot of cases. Yeah. Um, so we have a long enough group of folks, uh, a long enough tenured group of folks that we can go generation to generation to generation and people really know what's happening because they could talk to the folks when their sophomores are talking to the seniors and finding out what's going on. So you said you've been doing this for seven years. You've yes. had a team here for seven yes. years. Ever since um, the very first one up in Lancaster. Wow. And, and that's the uh, enough time for people to have graduated and move on. And can you attribute yes. their success in finding careers to being involved with this competition in any the, specific cases? The, the students who've graduated as part of the team, um, they basically have to dodge job interviews. I mean, I mean, people will come at them with, with, with business cards at job fairs like this and ninja starts, you will come with me. <laughs> yeah, we saw um, the people from Booz Allen. It was really, yes. they were like offering dates. I don't know oh, if yes, that's, yes, that's yes. going to be successful or not. Now, so do you find a difference between the students that are involved with the competition and those that aren't? Do they there, is, th th there is a bit of a difference in, in, in part because the folks who participate in the competition do so much extra work. And that really, I think, shows through yes. when it comes time for job interviews and things of that ilk. All the students, I think, are, are, have skills, but if you have a choice between someone who's put in 20 hours a week for, for eight weeks, 10 weeks to get ready for a cyber defense competition, that's the guy or the gal that you want on your, on, on your company. No, that's an excellent point. That, and the first time that they ever get into an incident, they've been through it. Exactly. Before, right? I, th I think it's great real-world training. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Yep. So, no, thank you very much yeah. for coming on. We greatly appreciate it. And I, I would strongly recommend, get those swim trunks ready because uh, we're going to try to work it out. We're, we're going to have the Gatorade. Gatorade, Gatorade, Gatorade. I, I, I know where the dean's office is. We'll, we'll, we'll find yeah. it. We'll work it out. <laughs> we'll work thanks. It out. Thank you so much thank for coming. Thank you very thanks. much. Really appreciate it. Good luck. Good luck. All right, I also believe that we have someone else uh, here as well. Should be coming up. There yes. People coming in. Wow, there right. she is. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Just about punched you in the face <laughs> on camera, on the internet, which would have been which would have been actually good for everybody involved. Right? Would have been good press, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> on Tosh .0. Um, and and your, uh, your course with uh, Radford University. Radford What's University. Name? My name is Eileen Heintman. Very, very cool. So tell us a little bit about your team. Um, your team got off to a little bit of a rough start as far as availability. Not necessarily mm -hmm. anything to do with technically, but I the heard they systems. lost power. They did. They did, in mm -hmm. fact, lost power. That was your team that... That you were referring to about the... The, the power cord, cord got wondered. kicked out. <laughs> oh, I, I so it, was, it was an accidental It was an power accidental. Power. It wasn't I even see. a red team. Somebody right. walked by and kicked but it out. But you know, that happens in real life. It does. I, yeah. I can't yeah. tell you how many times I've been in the data... I mean, my <laughs> friend's been in the data center <laughs> and accidentally unplugged something and caused an outage. And What's the first rule? Something's not working. Check the power cord. That's right. Have you tried turning it on and off? Right. Yeah. And then or forcing an unexpected reboot. Check the power cords. Absolutely. <laughs> so kind of the same types of questions we just talked to doc with Dr. Mike. What do you do to prepare your team? Uh, well, our team was this? actually formed, um, let's see, spring. It was actually offered as extra credit. And there's, um, this is the first year that Radford has ever participated. We just actually, um, Dr. Prem, our professor, had just heard about it through our sponsors, uh -huh. um, CyberPath, and uh, he asked if anyone wanted to do it for extra credit. And there were a handful of us at that time that were interested. And um, then we went from there, and we have met every Saturday, uh -huh. and um, we actually formed the club. Um, and by forming the club, we hope to get the next team coming up and developing them and um, we've put together labs and booklets and so we're Very really cool. working on building it and so what about seniority on your team uh, what's the age you got mostly seniors you're going to lose a lot of the team or do you three, think you're going to be strong we have three juniors on our team okay. but we are that's one of the reasons i think we're um, working on developing um, a system so that we can train you know the next um, classes coming up so I, th I think we're actually going to be stronger next year because this is our first year. We came in blind, mm -hmm. but um, I think it's, it's, a, on, it's a great now, experience. What were some of the resources you used to figure out what some of the other teams did in previous competitions, and how did you yeah, apply that you to your strategy? Yeah, because you came in blind. Yeah, I really got to be tough. Blind. We did a lot of research. Mm -hmm. um, we uh, Googled. We used. We found some of the red team that tweet. You know, mm -hmm. that do the yes. tweet things, we the and we Googles looked up. All the time. We looked up the tweeting. Um, they would put information down, you know, and, and we would search. We'd find a keyword in that, and keep going and keep going. And mm -hmm. that, and we watched the videos. Um, they, the CCDC site has a lot of information on it. Um, we, obviously, we use that. Paul.com. I go on that a lot. What, yes, yes, we got yes. a chance to meet yesterday. Yes. What is this Paul.com uh, you speak I, of? I leave <laughs> fast to listening to our, our show. I do. On your I commute do. to school? Or on my commute to school. On your commute mm -hmm. to school. So yes. sorry about the exotic liability. <laughs> 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 
Um, now, one of the questions, you got sponsors here. I do, yeah. Because this is Cyber cool. Path, yeah. Because, you know, oh. actually getting sponsorships, and Paul.com is interested in selling out even more. That's something we're very interested in. Money's when, nice. When we go to nationals, How do you work that out? Cyber, um, Cyber Path is actually <laughs> donating. Go when we go to nationals, oh, nice. Cyber Path is donating $25,000 to Radford University. Wow. And we did not know that until we met with Cyber Path um, as soon as we got here. So how, how did that how did that happen? Did you reach out to these companies? No, did they come and talk no. To you? Actually, um, Casey is really good friends um, with and works with um, the the guys that own CyberPath, and they had contacted Dr. Prem, and it went from there. So Dr. Um, they contacted Dr. Prem in regards to the competition. Casey O'Brien then contacted Dr. Prem, Dr. Flory, and it just developed from there. So he offered it as extra credit. And then we took it off from there. He said, I will be your mentor. I will um, be your advisor. But this is going to be student run and organized. So we did it. So do you think that eventually this will be one of those things where you're going to start seeing more teams that have sponsors um, from cybersecurity companies? I would hope so. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, it's, you know, we're all college students. We're poor, <laughs> you know, and, you, you know. <laughs> I mean, yeah, some you of know. us are just half that <laughs> equation, actually. Yeah. <laughs> but thanks for bringing that up. I appreciate <laughs> that. So what's some of the most fun and interesting things that you've seen in getting involved with computer security? Like, is there something that you really latch onto that you find particularly interesting, or are you still kind of being more general and finding the areas that you might be more I'm interested in? I'm being more general. A lot of the, um, the people on the team have, you know, the way we developed our team is we all listed our um, strong suits and mm -hmm. points, and some of them really narrowed in, and that's what they focused. We did make a point of everyone knowing, obviously, you know, all the systems, the generalization, but then we have specific people mm -hmm. that really focused on certain aspects. Um, and then I think one of the, the best things for me was actually how we developed as a group yeah. and that we work really well together. Mm -hmm. And um, Yes, you know, teamwork is important. It is. And that's what a lot of these companies are looking for. You know, when you come out of college, have you worked with groups? Can Are you a team player? Yeah. And we definitely are. Mm -hmm. Now, one final question. I'm very, very curious about this because mm -hmm. walking around talking to the teams, I'm talking with their team leads, and it seems like a lot of the team leads have very good poise. They're, they mm -hmm. seem to be more experienced than the other team. How does the team develop who's going to be the leader in the team? Because I could see that being very contentious in IT. What we did is we did not decide until after we had developed as a group, and it sort of came out naturally. Okay, so it wasn't, congratulations, you've got the position mm -hmm. because of whatever no. reason. So it just kind of happened naturally. Mm -hmm. No, that's 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 really great. Well, because you, you so want to build on your strengths. I'm sorry, I didn't No, that's fine, you, okay, but, you know, <laughs> It's like you find your strengths, and, and you put your strengths together with other people that work well with those strengths, and mm -hmm. it just develops. Outstanding. Very thank nice. You yes, so thank you so much. Thank, thank you so much. much. Yes. And Good best luck. of luck to your team. Thank It'd be you. nice yes, to see a I rookie team they... come and take the whole thing. That I told you awesome. when we go to nationals. <laughs> that, and I think I think color coordination is key. It's definitely yeah. key. Yeah. I think yeah. we like key. the shirt. Yeah. Yeah. Very nice. Absolutely. Thank Thanks, you. Eileen. Thank you so much. I think it's now time, Paul, for us to throw it down to, to the red team pit. Uh, yes. Paul, uh, Larry? I'm right here. Charlie? Larry and Charlie are down in the pit. Can you can you hear us? Yeah, we can hear you. Larry, you grew. Okay. So, down here in the pit, we're watching more fun with the red team uh, since last time that we since last time we were here uh, the fact that some of the teams still felt prepared we've gotten to see more and more about how the teams are exploiting uh, yeah. the blue side yep yeah so these guys are having a lot of fun it's really chill there's not a lot of anxiety going on because the tune the tunes going they're they're having fun with this and one thing that we were able to pick up from some of our uh, hackers here is They've been taking advantage of what would seem like some very uh, simple uh, vulnerabilities, things like... Otherwise known as stupid mistakes. Yes, things like not having a password on a machine mm. or having the password be password, things like that. And I'm just curious because, Larry, you do some of this in your real life. Absolutely. So. Do you... Does that, how often does that really happen? Uh, so every assessment we go on, we find default usernames and passwords. Some of them are really good. Some of them may be to a Cisco IP phone that doesn't get us anything, whether it be voice traffic, other than the IP, which we already knew, some of that type of stuff. Sometimes we get uh, default usernames and passwords to stuff like the, the uh, power management system for their entire data center, and one of the things in the, the menus is shut down. So you default username and password admin admin, you shut down their entire data center. Happens all the time. Which would be bad. Yes. Yes, yeah, definitely bad for business. Yeah, it's one of those aspects that's really hard to, you know, you can't really patch the human behavior. You just right. have to <coughs> teach people and enforce, you know, certain standards. Right, right. And, and certainly some of the things that, that we recommend, it, it's really hard to patch the human behavior. Um, but 
some of the things that we certainly recommend is that you can get around a lot of the, the human behavior by policy. If you know that you have to do these things, you're required to do these things. If you don't, you may lose your job. System build configurations, uh, password policy that any time before something goes online, you have to do these things to it, like change passwords. Some of the advice that was given to Blue Teams yesterday, hey, you've got this new inject where you have to stand up an um, NTP server or something of the like. Configure it, make sure nobody can get to it, secure it, then stand it up. As part of that security process, change your passwords. So you, you often see people connect something to the network before they've oh, yeah. deployed security. Oh yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. They just absolutely. have they just have this mentality that it takes hours for someone to break in. Uh, yeah, often, and uh, the other one too is that the, that we often see is oh well, but we've got a firewall. Hmm. <laughs> and what is wrong with that mentality? Uh, so the, it really comes down to where is the perimeter anymore? You've got a firewall at your perimeter and you're defending against hacks from networks. Well, what about the insider threat? What about your vendor that has, uh, or um, someone that's come into your conference room and plugged into your internal network? Uh, someone's compromised your wireless. Someone that's compromised a machine that is now VPNed into your, you know, your corporate environment. Where's the perimeter anymore? It's really hard to define that. Yeah, one thing I've seen a lot in, um, in some of the things that I've looked at, when you talk about the insider threat, mm -hmm. everybody thinks that that's some evil trader being dr dropped a bag of money in a dark alley somewhere. But a lot of times it can be your, it can be just the regular, I would call it the unknowing insider. But yeah, you, yeah. Someone that if you have a virus on your home computer mm -hmm. and you stick a thumb drive in your <clears> computer, Yep. You could carry that virus back to work if you plug that th same thumb drive into your work machine. Yep. And, and you know, we you, you know you talk about the insider threat, and it can be as simple as, oh, well, I'm going to put this spreadsheet on my thumb drive, so I can work on it this weekend. And they they take it home and they accidentally drop it in the parking lot. And well, that could potentially be insider threat because that they just didn't have any awareness that that could be bad. So as we keep seeing things happen here, we'll be giving you guys more updates. But the list of owned hosts on the monitor up here is. Still Oops. growing. Growing, and growing, growing. That scroll bar is getting really tiny. Yeah. And so I'm, uh, it'll be interesting to see how many we have by the end of today. Anyway, back up to you guys. Thanks, Charlie. And Larry, I just want to uh, say that I'm listening to the uh, techno music come from the Red Team area. And being the complete security geek that I am, I recognize some of it as being from the soundtrack Tron Legacy, which if anyone has not seen that movie or listened to the soundtrack, uh, I highly, highly recommend it. I'm getting look like wow. You That's need to get out more. Get out more. <laughs> I heard a couple from the hackers soundtrack actually, and it's yes, nothing like old nice. school. That's right. Very nice. <laughs> old school. Stuff. So John, we're here with our next guest. Absolutely. We've got uh, Ted Swergen. Is that correct? Yes. Absolutely. So, what is the name of your company? What do you guys do? Uh, the name of the company is uh, New Star, uh, and we actually do a lot of things. Um, we're an information and services technology company. Uh, we provide services to, um, you know. Internet companies, media companies, um, advertising companies, as well as telecommunication companies is actually where we were founded into uh, providing services for the telecommunication company. Now, what attracted you to CCDC for like sponsoring this? Um, well, we, we've always been a big proponent of uh, security, um, and we thought this was a great opportunity to be able to promote um, promote new, uh, younger, um, uh, not kids, but. Uh, Students, Go actually. Ahead and say it. You <laughs> Go ahead and kids. say it. You can okay. say kids. Uh, basically, right. students to basically come in and uh, really uh, you know, help promote the security in general, right? Security has become the forefront of every business and every every problem out, out there on the internet. So, uh, we need a, we're having the same trouble everybody is finding qualified candidates that have real world experience as well as the education background. So, this kind of gives them that. Now, with that in mind, you know, we were talking about a couple seconds ago with some of the instructors and some of the team leads that. It really helps prepare these students for the real world. What you're seeing with the services that you provide, does this type of competition actually really help these students get ready for what they're going to see in the real world of corporate America? I think it does. Um, what, what we see in corporate America is you, know, you can do a lot of academic things and you can learn the products and you can learn things, but it doesn't give you the stress level and the speed of what stuff happens. Mm -hmm. um, and so you know, being in these competitions, they get to learn you know, what executives want, what it needs, you know, how things change. It's never just one thing. It's, it's 50 things at one time. So, um, you know, trying to be able to keep that, keep everything on an agenda and take the things that come in every few minutes or, or hours. So, so what kind of qualities do you look for in potential candidates, uh, specifically that may come out of this competition? Well, um, we look for people that are well-rounded, actually have a broad background, mm -hmm. right? It's, it's good to have, you know, networking background, systems background, mm -hmm. some programming background. 
Um, you know, security is, a, is such a broad discipline nowadays mm -hmm. that you do need to specialize to get really good at, at one thing, but without that broad-based background, you, it's really hard to become a well-rounded security professional. Mm -hmm. So what kind of positions do you have uh, open really quickly um, in your organization? Well, for us, we have everything from uh, what we consider network security, which is firewalls, IDS, um, you know, VPNs, remote access, that type of thing, um, all the way to um, uh, risk management, which is pen testing, forensics, uh, incident response. Uh, and we also do security analytics. So you know, we have a full SOC, and we have need people to be able to do analyze security events and things like that and take action and, and do mitigation. Awesome. Well, Ted, thank you so much. On behalf of the security oh, community and the you. people at CCDC, it means a yes. lot to get sponsors. Thank you very None much. of this is possible without you guys. Oh, appreciate so, thank it. You thank you very much. I appreciate it. Well, that wraps up this particular section. I think that we just learned from Ted is that stress is an important factor of information security in corporate America. So we're going to take another quick half an hour break. And we'll be back at the top of the next hour with uh, hopefully some demonstrations of what the red team and blue teams are experiencing and interviews with more of our sponsors. So check back at 1 o'clock p.m.